believe you'll offend the commissioner. So when a LeBron talks politics, there are a lot of people out there in his corporate strata that are like, don't, don't go there. Just score. Good for the brand. So, you know, I, when you look at the kneeling and the anthem and Kaepernick, we saw how it damaged the NFL's yeah. numbers. So anytime an athlete, you've got to give athletes a little credit here. When they go political, their owners don't love it. Their GMs don't love it. Their agents don't always love it. Their managers don't love it. It takes a little bit of courage, sometimes not a little bit, for an athlete in this corporatized world we live in to go political. I agree. Because okay. most of those agents are like, shh, you'll offend this soap company and this car company and this mattress company. Yeah, and, and, and that's why I think he's done it the best you can. because he's. This clown Michael Rappaport is defending LeBron's snipey comments at Laura Engel. And little Jewish boy Rappaport claiming that what Laura Engel said, shut up and dribble, was racist because LeBron felt like chiming in against Trump. First of all, you're a basketball player with a high school diploma that you probably didn't even earn, but you play good basketball. Now, I've always defended LeBron, and I've kind of held him up because here's a guy that didn't go the NCAA phony student athlete route and just went right to the pros because he had the aptitude as far as a basketball player. But that doesn't make you a philosopher or a uh, uh, societal commenter uh, commentator about about what goes on in our, our world, nor should you be engaging in political uh, arguments because you disagree fundamentally with a conservative uh, president. Laura Ingram, Laura Ingram wrote a book uh, called Shut Up and Sing, and it was a reference to pretty much white liberal females that felt compelled to chime in on politics, and this goes back I don't know how many years ago. So she used that same metaphor against LeBron only because he's a basketball ball, ball player. He should shut up and dribble. There is no connotation of race. There is no connection to race. He's a basketball player. Uh, you know, regardless of his color, he's a basketball player. Now, me personally, I might have used some ethnic disparaging uh, remarks because that's what I do. And I don't care if you're of my ethnicity, I'm going to cut you. Uh, Laura Ingram is a lot more civil than I am. But what I can't stand is some black sycophant Hollywood fruitcake like this clown who plays at, pays, uh, prays at the altar of uh, a black street ghetto politics because he fancies himself a wigger, right? A red-haired wigger. That's what he is because he wants to be down with the bros, well, drop him off in the middle of the night on 3rd Avenue and you'll see how down with the bros he is when they kick the shit out of him. But you can't say that because that's the truth. I used to take a black gentleman home from 42nd and uh, Times Square back in the late 70s when I worked for off-track betting. I used to run him up to the uh, 96th Street exit off the West Side Highway. We'd talk on the way up, but as soon as we got to his exit, man, that guy slid over to the right as far as he could and jumped out of that car acting like he never saw me before. Because, to quote what he said, if the niggers see me, they'll kill me. That's what he used to say. He was a black guy. I didn't say it. He did. So when I hear some white guy who's trying to earn gravitas points with the street people by showing that uh, he's all above racism and such. There ain't a human being on this planet that doesn't have a tinge of racism. The difference is there are honest people and there are liars like this guy, this fruitcake, who wants to shoot his mouth off about stuff he is completely ill-equipped to discuss. But in any event, I just wanted to call you out, Michael Rappaport, and if I run into your sorry ass, am I going to have a lot of fun?